Welcome to the Waves Business Coaching Podcast, where we help leaders build their dream team so that they can have more freedom. Uh, This episode, a little bit of a fun episode on this one. So we've been talking through my new book, Master Your First Job, which is out now. And you can learn more at masteryourfirstjob.com and you can get copies of the book as well for just 99 cents. But we've been talking through the book chapter by chapter and chapter 10 is all about having fun at your first job. And I said that it's the most important chapter in the book and the most important thing you can do at your first job. So I'm doing two episodes on having fun at work. And on this one, I interviewed some of my friends that worked with me at my first job at Chick-fil-A just to tell a few stories of how much fun we got to have at our first job and how all these years later, it's still lasting memories that we all look back on very fondly. So this one's a fun one. Just sit back, relax, and uh, listen to some fun stories and funny stories of me and my friends at my first job. Daniel, you and I got to work together at Chick-fil-A from 2013 to 2017. Um, I'd love for you to share one of your favorite memories of us having fun at work. Yeah, I've got several, of course, but (laughs) um, I think for me, you know, we were always better when we had, you know, a special objective that was kind of outside of normal business. So, you know, all the operations stuff was always great, you know, and we had good goals there. Um, But Jacob, you were someone who anytime you saw something that wasn't perfect or exactly how you like it, you liked to say, maybe we could do that better. And then both of us have, you know, just a general love for comedy. So when we started thinking (laughs) and you said, hey, I think think we should do we should see if we could take over the christmas party and i was like dude i've never even thought of that i just assumed we just show up (laughs) we eat some catered food we get a raffle for a gift we all get some sort of a gift card and we leave all happy and on our merry way and it's just a little checkbox for me in my head um and so yeah when you said that i was like okay well i you know you caused me to kind of think of things a little differently yeah as far as that goes but (laughs) You're like you the the night that you said that you send me a image of myself in a tuxedo which you took from Facebook from me in a wedding <laughs> you you had that and you put it next to the Woodstock Dwarf House uh, presents Christmas party or something uh-huh, like that uh-huh. and it was the same image of the Tonight Show. And Uh so, uh, you sent that to me and I immediately was like all in, you know, all it takes for me is a little bit of vanity. I was like, Oh, I'm in, you know, I'm going to get some credit for this. I'm going to look phenomenal. Um, you know, when can we print these posters and put them all over the place? That's where I was at. Of course you were just like, it was a mock-up. You're like, no, 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 this is just like a joke. We're not, you know, we'll do this. We'll do this better. Um, whenever it comes time. And then, uh, of course, we start asking the operator, asking the the leaders and say, hey, yeah, so they knew we were going to do a good job and you, they knew we were going to, you know, obviously abide by all the rules and be clean and all of this. But it was kind of a way for us to start, you know, get our creative juices flowing. Both of us have comedic timing. Both of us, you know, were the funny guys at the store telling all the jokes and stuff and you know, we kind of had a structure in place. We said, why don't we just model the tonight show? So, yep. you know, we got to work, we started doing it and, um, you know, it was fun. We kind of on our own just wrote, you know, individual kind of monologues. And then we said, Hey, we're going to do, you know, uh, what thank you notes as a segment. So like, what are some funny jokes that we could write as a thank you note? And we just kind of made it personal to the store. Uh, and that was awesome. And then <laughs> we did, um, why is that that game with all the boxes, mystery boxes, um, a box of lies, box of lies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> where you put the most ridiculous things or the most <laughs> mundane things in a box and you have people have to lie to each other or tell the truth and they have to determine which, you know, which is which from, from one <laughs> right, another. Right. And so being able to do that kind of stuff and kind of, <laughs> you know, we tested the boundaries of it with what we did and, yes, we um, did. You know, there's a lot of fun. There's a lot of fun doing that kind of stuff. But uh, we, you know, I, I loved that, you know, we we did a few few different things like, you know, I've I'm always like a showman as far as the music goes. So I was like, we've got to have walk in music. So, of course, yep, we played yep. Crazy Train for like 
Chipper Jones walking to the plate, one of our favorite baseball players. And so we all, we both walked in with Braves jerseys and sunglasses Braves jersey, on. Yep. And like, I'll never forget that. And so we came in and did that. And then we did uh, lip sync battles for everybody, but we let it off and we, did, we actually kind of semi choreographed uh, what makes you beautiful by one direction. <laughs> so, uh, and that kind of went perfect without us really doing a whole lot of practice. We had a couple things we practiced, but then it just kind of went way better than we had anticipated live. And then, uh, yeah. So like those kinds of little things, but like setting up for that, I mean, some of the things that are the most fun at a restaurant is, working late, you're working at night, doing all these kinds of things. Well, when we were setting up for it, we worked the night before, I think until 3 a.m. <laughs> setting up, me, you, and Tuttle. And it was eating like... a cold, spicy food. We were eating old, <laughs> cold sandwiches, and like, we were just having the best time, and oh, God. we were like, doing final, like, walkthroughs and run-throughs, and making sure all the sound was set up, and I have no idea how that stuff works. You and Tuttle knew... <laughs> I was just, I always joked, I was just the talent. I was there to make people laugh. And of course you had the best joke in the whole thing, I think, or, uh, you we had a, a coworker who was from Louisiana and you made a, a joke at the expense of potentially hurricane Katrina, something to that. And maybe you know, it was so good and it was so <laughs> well-timed and I, Never could not laugh while you were telling it and all of the practice. Then I was able to finally hold it together when we actually did the show. So, um, yeah, that was, yeah. So yeah, I would, I would have never thought to do something like this. This is not necessarily my forte. Uh, I don't like, I'm good at solving a problem when it comes up, but if something doesn't seem like a problem, I'm not going to raise it up. And Jacob, that's something you always do. You always pull a problem out of nowhere um, I and mean, that's what, you know, the good is the enemy of great. So I feel like that's a great quality to have. And so you were able to kind of like find, Hey, you know, this is something fun that we could do better. And, you know, while it wasn't necessarily something on the job, it was like, dude, we got to do this. And I get to tell people all the time, dude, I hosted the tonight show as like my Christmas party two years in a row. Cause of course oh, this dude, story keeps going year. after we did it the first year, the next year we did it bigger and better. We did it actually at our church with all of the sound equipment and with the screens Light and screen, we had stage. recorded videos. We were on stage. We did a intro video to Christmas in Hollis by run DMC. I mean, we had wow. like, you know, <laughs> forgot about that. a awesome. time lapse <laughs> and it was, I mean, you know, I think that, <laughs> I think that some people were tired of it because they were, you know, not having, you know, but I, a majority, I would say 90% of everybody had a blast. So, um, you know, I, I firmly enjoyed it. Um, and then I think that, you know, it was different because for so many years it was just like, oh, you just show up to this party and you just do whatever they want to do. And then, but now it was like, hey, it was kind of for the people by the people, you know, for the employees by the employees. So we put it on, we had input from everybody, you know, if people wanted to be part of it, we had them be part of it. And then we had a part at the end for everybody. So that was cool. And I felt like it was, it was something that not everybody um, is always going to get to experience something like that. So uh, yeah, that was probably one of my favorite stories. The box of lies, the, there, there's a couple of things I remember that we put in there, but one was, <laughs> <laughs> one that I can share was you remember this? It was a, a hot brown, which if you're not familiar, um, is a, a dish at the, the dine in full service Chick-fil-A restaurants. I, do they still make them? I don't even know. Um, I, I don't know if they do. They might do it at the original dwarf house. It is like a gravy base, chicken, cheese, bacon, bacon toast. It's very Southern. Um, but it was a hot brown, like, but it was like the center of a battle scene. We took army men, <laughs> two different color army men, and they were like fighting over the hot brown on this, like, we glued it all down to like this piece of cardboard. And it was like a military fight scene of uh, fighting over the hot brown, which is funny. And oh, God, dude, the best one though is there is a famous picture of one of the guys who worked there in the dining room, Jesse, who had taking a picture for our social media with this sandwich that again, as a Chick-fil-A brand nerd, uh, 
I was mad at the picture brand. because it was it was yeah. it was made incorrectly. It was a it was an incorrectly made sandwich that we were like, "Hey, come order this at Chick Fil A," and it's like it's not even made right. Um, but it was a great picture because Jesse's full of joy and has a great smile, and so we <laughs> one of we, a kind smile. We made a sandwich exactly like it, and then we made a fake certificate real. Of <laughs> <laughs> with with a picture of the sandwich with the certificate and got Jesse to sign it. Um, Did he take a bite of it? Did we have him take a bite? I can't remember. I'm oh. like that. I can't remember. I, I I need to go see if I have a picture of it. But uh, yeah, man, that was fun. Yeah, nothing like it. Um, dude, I appreciate you sharing. Thank you. Yeah, man. My pleasure. Nate, you and I got to work together for three years at Chick-fil-A. We, we've known each other for a lot longer. Um, actually never call you Nate and call your last name Tuttle. Um, <laughs> but dude, so you and I got to work together for three years. You enjoyed your first job at Chick-fil-A, probably your second job, but enjoyed your job at Chick-fil-A. Uh, dude, tell us a fun story about just working at Chick-fil-A. So there was this one time when uh, me and my brother got into a prank war because he also worked there with us. That's right. And uh, it started with, I don't know who fired the first shot, but... Uh, hoses who shot were, first? Yeah, who knows? But uh, the the water jet in dish room was sprayed at multiple people that night. Oh, and uh, as you know, I'm one to I don't play to get even. I play to win. <laughs> That's right. Um, I'm, I'm I'm gonna I might not start it, but I will finish it. And that's gotten us in trouble before. Yes, it has. Um, and so. I decided that I was going to climb up the ladder on the fire escape to the roof and someone handed me a 12 quart uh, bucket. So that we real used quick, to just, use. To, just to add some context, the, the ladder goes up and about halfway. It's like the, the indoor like ceiling starts. Mm-hmm. And so you can't see people. If, he wasn't on the roof. But like you can't, if you're halfway up the ladder, you cannot see that someone's on the ladder. So like you're you're hidden on this ladder. Yeah, if you look up, you could see me. But right, like right, if you're right. just walking by, I'm two Can't feet tell. above people's eye line. Right. Especially in a restaurant when people are busy, not you know, not paying attention. Right. And I had I don't remember who I had go and get Caleb. That there was some someone was complaining in the front after close because I wasn't gonna do this before close like hey there's this lady still in the front have him go tell caleb that and he rounds the corner and just dumped the whole 12 12 quart bucket on him um he was not very happy with me but he's my (laughs) younger brother so he has to deal with it dude we did were you around do you remember the als challenge happened no i was in el salvador when that happened i saw your video (laughs) like the ice bucket challenge yes dude so we like I mean, again, same 12 quart containers. If you've worked in fast food, you probably are very familiar with these clear 12 quart containers. But we were like, oh, we'll do the ice bucket challenge, except we took it, filled it up with ice, filled them up with water on a cart, like 10 of them, and then stuck them in the freezer for like five hours that night. And then after close, so it was not frozen, but just know that it was like the coldest water you could imagine being. And then, yeah, I did the ice bucket challenge after work. I thought I had a towel in my trunk that night. Absolutely did not have a towel in my trunk that night. It was awful. It was freezing cold. Goodness. Dude, okay, what's what's one more story? I I, I know you got two in the chamber. So another one was our Chick-fil-A had a full service restaurant side. That's right. Well, with our quick service food. Um, And uh, on Monday nights, it was always the slowest night. And we wanted to clean up early. And so that way we could close faster and get home. Some of us. Everybody were, wants to get home. That's right. Well, we some of most of us were clopening. So that's right. <laughs> uh, our manager on duty would close it, but if we asked him, he wouldn't. Or the stipulation was we had to ask him in a a creative way, and so <laughs> we had right. we had gotten creative ways. Um, but that night, uh, his wife uh, was pregnant at the time, so we went online and created a custom onesie. And sent it to his wife and his wife texted it to him 
And I mean, our wayside got closed at nine o'clock that night. <laughs> that was, there were, I can probably think of 10 different creative ways to, uh, to close a wait side early, but that's definitely one of my favorites. That's hilarious, dude. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing and, uh, being on the ways business coaching podcast. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Hunter, you and I got to work together for three years at, at my first stop at Chick-fil-A, uh, share a story about us having fun at work, man. Yeah. So there's there's a pretty long list we could get into, but I think there's one that you know pretty much resonates with everybody. That's just a really fun story, um, lighthearted, just a quick one of those things that I used to do at work where I was like, "Hey, let's um, let's get the vibe going and have a good time today." So um, I couldn't even tell you exactly when it was. We were working. I'm pretty sure it was a, a Saturday night shift not very busy we're usually cutting up with each other and i was on fries and i pulled a fry bag out and i just started messing with it and i poked some holes and put it on my head and kind of twisted it around and if anyone's seen harry potter you know the <laughs> first one they've got the sorting hat that determines you know which wizards and witches go to their houses so i put it on <laughs> i think we were trying to decide who was working what station in the back so I put it on, and I was like, it's the Chick-fil-A sorting hat. That's right. And I looked through the chute, and everybody in the front was like, what is going on back there? So I started walking around, and I was putting on people, and I was like, you're going to work breading tonight. And then I put it <laughs> someone else, you're making sandwiches tonight. So, yeah, that's that's just one of those, you know, goofy things that I used to do at work, man. I'm, I've, I'm always, uh, always been a you should have fun while you're working kind of guy. So it's just a long list of little things that I would do to lighten the mood. It's funny. I shared on the last episode about the mop bucket story, which you were also involved in. I said that the, <laughs> the I, I hope that the statue of limitations is up on that now. Yeah. Uh, there's probably some more stories of the statue of limitations is not quite done yet. So maybe you'll no. share that another time, but uh, no. yeah, the sorting hat, it's funny, even still to this day, I, I I was say my wife did not work there with us, but I've told her the story. Uh, anytime <laughs> we watch Harry Potter, it's just yeah. a reminder of that story. And anytime she just loses it laughing, because all she can think about is I, I do the voice too. Yeah. Where I just like you know, but the hat be like fries and like <laughs> your, your dishes. Yeah, and putting the sorting hat on people. Oh man, I think the best part about that was one, I was trying to grow a mustache. Back then, it was not cool. Now, mustaches are, <laughs> like, cool. Shout out Spencer Strider, you know. He made mustaches cool. That's Back right. then, I was like, it was not it. I don't know what was going on. Uh-huh. So, the picture really resonates with the story because this fry bag's, like, on my head. There's this really bad mustache going on. It's like, who is this guy back here, man? And, you you know, you've seen the picture on screen if you're watching here on YouTube. Um, what a great what a great story, man. I know we had a ton of fun at work and I'm just grateful that again, at my first job, I, I allow myself to have fun and yes. meet some of my best friends that I have. I mean, you started, you said 2014. So we're sitting here 10 years later mm -hmm. uh, and still, you know, one of my best friends in the world and grateful that uh, we got to have fun at our first job, man. Yeah, dude. It, I'm wherever I'm at, you know, I'm going to cut up. Um, they may, they may have to change something about the way the job is to be done after that, but that's just who I am, man. That's right, man. Dude, thanks for sharing. Yep, for sure. Thank you so much for watching and listening to this episode of the Waves Business Coaching Podcast. If you want to get your copy of my book, Master Your First Job, you can do that at masteryourfirstjob.com. I'm also giving away the audiobook and a 15-minute video summary for free with every purchase of the book. And you can get the ebook for just 99 cents. So I think that's tremendous value for just a dollar where you can get a copy of the book, the audio book, and a 15 minute video summary that is a, an amazing resource to make sure you can actually go back and have action items and take away a high level summary from the book, which is something that every book would do. And I wanted to make sure I got that in your hands for this one. So uh, for more information on my new book, Master Your First Job, go to masteryourfirstjob.com. Thank you so much for watching and listening. Take care.